with me today. Um, today you're going to be creating with Colleen. My name is Colleen Magnus and I am an independent demonstrator on the East Coast in Chesapeake, Virginia. And I come to you live every Wednesday at noon because I know, you know, you're in the middle of the week. Hopefully it's a great week. You're in the middle of the day. Hopefully it's a great day. But if not, just take a break and watch me create. Grab your sandwich and just relax for a little bit. So today is January 24th and um, I hesitate to say this. We always talk about the weather. But for those of you who are up north um, in the cold, uh, thankfully I know you're used to it, uh, but it is 70 degrees here today in Virginia. The sun is shining. Of course, it was in the teens this weekend, but that is the most wonderful thing about living on the East Coast in Virginia is that you can have every season, spring, summer, winter, fall, all in one month, all in one week, I should say, uh, sometimes all in one day. It's just crazy here. We don't get as much snow as I would like, but after seeing some of the snow y'all have been getting, if I had to pick or choose, I'll let y'all have the snow. So anyways, today we are going to create a desk calendar. I create one every year because I like having them in different places of the house because sometimes it's hard to keep straight what day of the week it is. Um, the first one I'm showing you is the same size as a card, so you can even make it as a card. But then I'm going to show it to you a second way with a different size. I'm going to show you some different fun um, uh Sponging techniques, that's not the word I'm looking for, with your little brushes. But anyway, stick around because my goal is to teach you something. Um, I've been a demonstrator for over 22 years and I promise I can teach you what to do. I can sometimes, quite often, teach you what not to do. But my goal is to teach you something. So let me boot up my video here so I could see who's online on my laptop. I'm gonna turn this camera around and we're gonna start creating. So hold on. How is this? Yeah, there's that little button. Some days it's harder to hit than others. So let me put y'all up in here. Okay, we get in the screen. All right. So again, thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate you. So Renee is here. Oh, Renee finally got out of the frigid temperatures. Oh, you got a balmy 41 and uh New York. I know y'all are thankful for that. And to you, some people I'm sure are walking around in shorts and flip-flops. Here, people would still be freezing. Um, oh, rainy into Aunt Indiana. Hey, Mary. Well, at least you got a good day to sit inside and watch some creating. Diane is here. Yes, beautiful day in Chesapeake. Sally, hello, Sally. Finally remember to stay home so I could visit with you. Sally is a very busy person. She does so much for so many. So Sally, I'm glad you are here. Next, we'll have to hook up for a cup of coffee. That's the only thing that could be better. And Bren and Jody, Judith. So good afternoon, ladies. We are going to create. I don't know why I have such shadows on my paper. I apologize. One day I'll get all the technicalities worked out, but it won't be today. So let me show you what we're going to make. Again, every year I create a desk calendar. And... It's just nice to have something pretty to look at and see what day it is. So that is the side. And y'all will be so proud of me. I've already taken pictures and when I give you the dimensions, I've already taken pictures of that. So as soon as my video is over, I'm gonna go grab a very quick PBJ and of course my Lay's potato chips and the yellow bag, they're the best ever. Um, I will come up here and I will post all this to my Creating with Colleen Facebook page. So you'll be able to see everything. So this is the first calendar that I'm going to make for you. And then with it being celebration where you can earn free products with Stampin' Up, I had to play with the Jungle Pals. So this one, I show you how to make your calendar any size that you want. Same concept, but I did do it a little bit of a different size here. Not by, by you know, probably all by accident. It was. Um, but this was so much fun to play with. But the reason I wanted to show you the main part of this to make it different sizes is because you could do a calendar any way you want. You could actually take this, you could maybe put your calendar at the bottom and you could put a picture at the top. You know, put a picture of your grandchildren or something that really brings you joy. So you can look at that every day too. So without further ado, because it is a gorgeous day, I want to get out in it. I'm going to go to my Dear friend Tanya's house, we have a team event we are working on. I have to get straight today. And Danny is out making the yard pretty again. So here, the first one I said I was using 
This is perennial lavender, and this is on page 22 and 23 of the mini catalog. And I am going to actually be using the gorgeous, well, the designer paper is just phenomenal. And I have been telling you and telling you, when you get this, get a pack of the Highland Heather and the Gorgeous Great cardstock too, because it actually coordinates so well with this, and so does our Lost Lagoon. Three amazing colors. But this is the bundle I'm gonna use. It's called Painted Lavender. And recently the dyes were not available, but they are in. So if you've been waiting on that, you can get the dies and the stamp set together as a bundle, and you'll save 10% by doing that. So I just placed two orders for people with the dies, so it wasn't supposed to be until next week, but it came early. I am happy. So this here, again, so you could see it, this is the stamp set, and then these are the dies. And incidentally, if you did not know, I always like to say it because I have different people watching at different times. When you're looking at a catalog and it's you see the white background, that means that it has dies that cut those out. So you can stamp those images and cut the dies. And there's other dies in there for just beautiful shapes, but they do frame those stamps. So what you're gonna need, get all my little parts and pieces. I didn't have my regular post-it pad, so there's no sticky on here, so it doesn't wanna stick. But this is four and a quarter by 11 inch Highland Heather. Then I have, this is my base piece. So this, when I cut this, it's four and a quarter, it's four and a quarter by four, because it's gonna go this way under my calendar. And I always cut it just a smidgen short, maybe just like a 16th of an inch, because it's gonna go under my calendar and I don't want like it's accidentally sticking out. So it's either the same size or just slightly under. So this is four and a quarter by four. And on the four inch side, which is this here, I scored it at a half inch, two inches, and three and a half. So basically it's four inches you scored in half at two, and then just a half inch on each side. Then I have, see these colors, aren't they amazing? This is four by five and a quarter inch piece of gorgeous grape. And I distressed it with my current favorite folder, the distressed tile folder. So this is so very pretty. But I did do that ahead of time since we are making two projects. Um, in my other videos, I do show you how to use the die cutting machine. So if you have any questions, you can always go to one of those. I have a one and a half inch square piece of basic white. I have a two inch piece of the uh, perennial postage dies. So they are also, they're the other bundle that is with this suite. And what's really nice, though you can't really see it, they're all these squares and shapes, but their edges are like a postage stamp. So very cool. So that's the one that measures about two inches. Then I have a piece of the Perennial Lavender Designer Series paper, and that is three and three quarters by two and a half. Then you're gonna need a calendar. Now I did get these off Etsy, um, the calendars are three by two and a quarter. They have different sizes that you can order. So there's smaller one, bigger ones. I typically get this size because I need my numbers at least that big to see them. Um, and it kind of works on my cards. Anything smaller, I might be guessing what day it is again. So then I have from the dies, these really cute little sprigs. I've got my lavender and my back. So that's Lost Lagoon, that's Highland Heather. So this one's gonna go together fairly quick. I think you will like it. Let me put all my parts here. And let me check my comments. Let me see. Um, let me see. Oh, somebody just asked you, Brent, if you were gonna make calendars. I have to do them every year from myself. Um, so anyways, but I just, and I love them. I think they're really cute sitting on a counter or sitting on a desk. So Mary Ellen's, hang in there, baby. She's in Montana and she is ready for some warmer weather can only imagine. My brother lives in Iowa, Council Bluffs, and um, they really got hit with some snow last week, lots of it. And they were in the negative temps. I think we would fall apart here on the East Coast if we got temps like that. Just makes you tough though. Okay, so here I have the die, and actually it's like it's gonna be gorgeous either side that I use. A lot of our embossing folders, look at both sides. 
because depending on what it is, you will get a different, a little bit of a different look on each side. Um, but I think it's great. It's like getting two folders in one. So here I'm going to take my gorgeous grape that was embossed with a distressed tile. It almost looks like I'm just creating a card because this typically for this one is the size of a card. Then I'm going to take my um, Perennial Lavender Designer Series paper and I actually want to put my little sprigs on here first because I want to be able to trim them off down at the bottom. All right, y'all gonna see this. Isn't this cool? This was a, I know I can hear y'all saying, ooh, ah. I went to a crop and a gal was selling these and it's really like a paper piercer, but isn't this like an amazing paper piercer? She put all these little trinkets on here. She strung these beads on here and it looks like they're just glued. And I'm gonna tell you her secret because I know you're gonna to wanna to make one. This is a metal skewer for doing kebabs. Isn't that cool? So anyways, that's my new, I wish I had her name and I could tell you what it was. I'll see her again in February, but I just love this. You look even more stylish when you're creating. So for my Highland Heather, I did want to sponge them a little bit just because it's a gorgeous color, but it tends to be a little flat. So, oh, Kathy's watching and she's not home. Well, glad I'm, I'm glad you're watching, Kathy. Hopefully you're someplace else fun. But here I'm just taking Highland Heather ink and I'm just going to come in here and just soften, soften my edges a little bit. It just gives it a little bit of a dimensional color. And it just, um, it's not so flat. It's a beautiful color, but not as flat. Okay, so I have that. You might not be able to see it, but in person, it works well. And so now what I'm gonna do is, keeping in mind that I'm gonna take this two inch square kind of over here, that's where my words are gonna go. Um, so I'm just going to take, I'm gonna put this piece down first. And again, that's Lost Lagoon. So I will just, I love our Tombow liquid glue. I'll put this on here. I heard from a dear customer, Sonia said it was so cold where she was at when she got her glue, it was frozen. Um, and it wouldn't work. It, it was kind of messed up. So typical Stampin' Up! fashion, they are sending her a couple of replacements, but she said, don't send it to the spring because she said it's just crazy cold where she's at. So I guess that can happen. Most liquids can freeze. So I kind of wanted to put this up just a little bit too. I like it off, but I'm gonna put one there. Now what's cool about these dies, these two are cut at the exact same time. So it's these here. So you run it through once and you have this one, which is a little more full, and then that's just a little less. But it's just enough different to be cute. So again, I will just, you need so little of this because it really is strong. And I don't go all the way to the top because I want that, it can stick out a little bit if I want. At least the other one did. So I'm just gonna put this here. Tap that down for a minute. And then take this one. And put this here. I hear Danny blowing out there. The yard's gonna be pretty. So love it. And then I could just put this one here. And I kind of stagger them with that's a little higher. That's the highest. The one on the left is a little bit higher. And then that down at the bottom. Oh. So Karen England said she loves this suite. I do too, Karen. In fact, I was hesitant to show it today because I feel like I've shown it quite a bit, um, but she haven't seen it as a calendar. And then I'm also gonna show it to you with the Jungle Pals. Love that bundle too, a lot of fun. So here, when I have this, I'm gonna cut this off now. That's why I didn't wanna put it down first. And I'll just come across. And here, gosh, I'm gonna trim that little piece up. Now that I have this and it's on the side, I can go ahead and glue this down. And I am gonna use my Tombow liquid glue because when you're gluing on an embossing folder, you have different um, heights and lows. It's not like it's a flat piece. And your tape, if you're using the Stampin' Seal, 
it will hold because that's very strong too, but I think a liquid, gold, um, liquid glue just kind of gets in all those little crevices and makes sure it's gonna stay there. So I have that. Now the stamp, I always wanted to kind of have something about the day, which I loved. And we have uh, products from online exclusives. Now they're called online exclusives because that's the only way you can see them is online. So you want to go there um, to my website and you can see them. But one of the ones that was on here, it's called Garden Meadow. And I love, it says, every day is a fresh day. So no matter how bad your day was the day before, get a good night's sleep. Things all, they typically look better in the morning, or at least I hope they do. But just remember, every day is a fresh start. Don't beat yourself up over something that went wrong or something you wish you would have done. Just start the day, you get another chance. Make it right. So every day is a fresh start. And this actually comes with the dies. I bought it mainly, I love this window. Such beautiful cards in here. Um, you have the little garden, paint, uh, garden can, bushes, a gate, and then the paper was phenomenal. So with the paper, let me just show you a couple of them. Isn't that gorgeous? They just, and what they do with Stampin' Up, they actually paint. They paint these images and then they make them into designer paper. But I love the path. So that's, um, they're gorgeous. So this is all a suite that you can get online. And then, sorry, I used all the other little dragonflies, but they have two types of birds. These are, um, I don't know that you can see that. These are brass, little self-adhesive brass gems. So you have two birds that are flying different directions and you had dragonflies here, but I used them all. So I'll be ordering some more. So from there, I am gonna take the Lost Lagoon and I'm gonna stamp my words. Every day is a fresh start. Now, if you look at this, again, I don't know if you can see it. Let me put something behind it. Oh, that's not good. Here we go. I don't know if you can see that. Every day is a fresh start. See how the every day, it's, you know, it's definitely horizontal. It's definitely like to the T. And then fresh starts all kind of curvy. When I line something up like this, I don't look at the fresh start because that goes all over the place. I look at the every day is A because that is straight and that's what I line up on my paper right there. Now I'm gonna cheat and even put this underneath it so I can see. Hard to see white on white sometimes. So here I have every day is a fresh start. I look at the every day, make sure it's straight at the top. And then that's gonna be straight instead of trying to line up down there. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and just tape this to my little postage piece, like so. And then I can pop this up. I'm gonna put it on with some dimensionals. My little bitty ones will work well for this. Looks like a domino little domino effect, and then I'll just pull these off. Hey, Donna, glad you're with us from Oregon. Very cool. Oh, Bren just ordered her calendars. Very good, Bren. Yeah, again, I look forward to them every year. So I will put this one here. Then I will take my calendar, and, and I do put this on first so I can make sure I'm even on these sides, and that leaves me plenty of room for my calendar on top. So again, I will put this on with some liquid glue. And then I'll show you how to do the base of the calendar. So I wanna slide this under here, cause I did have that up. I kinda of like it leaning over a little bit. Let me make sure I'm straight y'all. Yep. So outside of, you always have to have like a little bling or something on there if you can. So these are the purple fine shimmer gems that come with this gorgeous suite. I'll just take my pick tool. There's this little, it's a little long, but I've got this little gummy piece on here and I'm gonna go for a light one. I can just pick this up, put it on there. It works better if I had trimmed that some, hold on. Let me show you the proper way. All right, that's what you don't do, hold on, back up. I'm just gonna trim that off. 
And incidentally, what's cool is they have refills for this. So now that it's not so long and in the way, it's just a little gummy on there. Now let me pick it up again. Works much better. Put it on there. And there I have the front all done. So for the base, again, when I was telling you, this is as wide as this. This is slightly under. So this is four and a quarter by four. Whenever you're doing these calendars, I find four inches is just a great distance to give you this right here. So I'm gonna fold it like a W. I'm just gonna go this way. Where's my phone folder? Like an accordion. So I go that way, then in the middle, increase that. Then I have this piece again. Okay. Now it's funny because don't sweat this part too much. Whether you get it one way or the other way, they both work. When I like to put it in here, I like to put my glue on this edge in the fold I like to put here, like that, and I'll show you. If you get it wrong, and let me get you, get it this way, if you put your glue there and you put it the edge here, it will still work. Looks a little different, but it works just fine. Let me see if I can hold that for you. I have fat fingers. You just push it up that way. So see how it kind of comes up and goes that way? It's still going to work. If you go just the opposite, you always got to have the middle facing up, like I'm going to do. If you go the opposite, then it's going to be like that. Either way, your calendar is going to stand up for you. I kind of like having a project that, you know, there's really no wrong way to do it. You'll be much more successful that way. You'll feel good about yourself. So here, again, the, the way I like to do it, is I put my glue on that little piece there, and I'm gonna put it so the fold is on the inside edge. And the only reason I told you make it slightly smaller, because I didn't want this, if it was cut, just a little bit bigger sticking out, slightly in. So I have that. Then I can go ahead and put my tape, I mean my um, liquid glue here. And really, this will kind of get pushed down, pushed back like this. And all you have to do is close it. So once I close it, okay, note to self, do the front first. There's a slight edge. I think I'll still sleep tonight. I think I can get it right. There we go, just push it up. The beauty of liquid Tombow glue is that you do have a small period of time to move your items. That's why I really do like it. Okay, so there it stands up, like so, and that is how the side looks. So you can make any size as long as it's this way, whatever, how long it is, you'll see on the next one, and then four inches back. So there is the first one. Now for the second one, I promised you I'm going to do it, that was vertically, I'm going to do it horizontally. And I'm going to make it bigger because when I tried to do it the size of the card, I was afraid this would be too tight. So I'm going to show you how to make this one. And I like this even, even fun. Enjoy your day. I might give that to Danny for the garage. He might need that. So what you're going to use here is blueberry bushel. So I have a six by eight and a half inch piece of blueberry bushel. And I scored it at four and a quarter, so it's scored in half. Then for my base, I have the six by four. Remember, this is six inches, so I want my calendar base to be just under six inches, so I make sure it doesn't stick out on the sides. It's four inches wide. So this one, I actually, I was going off memory, so you know I got it wrong. Um, for the other one, it's four inches you score in the middle, and I had done a half inch and a half inch on each side. Well, this time I did three quarters, because that's what I thought it was, and it works. Again, great project. So I scored it at three quarters, and half at two, and then this is three and a quarter. So just three quarters on each side. I will give you confidence in your stamping if you watch me, I promise you. Because I can get it wrong, 
but it's okay. So here we have three and an eighth inch by two and three eighth inch blueberry bushel because I wanted to mount my calendar on that. And then I have a piece of balmy blue and that is five and a quarter by four of the balmy blue. So you can take a screenshot right now or as I promised, as soon as I fix my lunch, I'm gonna come back upstairs and I'm going to, um, and while I eat, I'll put all these measurements, the pictures, and everything on my Creating with Colleen Facebook page. So going forward here, I want to decorate, I want to do this part first. Okay. So here is my balmy blue. It's going to go this way. And I wanted it to make look like he was hanging out with the clouds, like he's in the sky. And again, y'all know I have a hard time leaving a color flat. So what I did is I just took one of my blending brushes. Now, I did this a long time ago and it ended up getting a little hard. Still works great. Uh, this is the Craft Whisper White ink. So unlike our other ink pads, which are classic inks, they're made with water. They're a water-based ink. A Whisper White ink is more, it's made with a pigment ink. Um, it's cool. It stays sticky for a little bit, so you could emboss with it. You could throw embossing powder on here, clear embossing powder, and it would uh, emboss white. But you can also, you can stamp with it, which is really beautiful because even when it dries, it dries a little bit lighter. And it's just a beautiful, soft um, stamp when you do it. You could do it for background. But here, I am going to make some clouds. So I'm just going to come in here. And again, I'm pretty much just breaking up all this um, balmy blue. I just didn't want it to be flat. I guess I'm having a problem with flat today. So here, I can just put them in here and it dries very, very soft. I was gonna ink this up because it really needs to be inked up, but then I was afraid I'd get blotchy. So we're just gonna rub good. But just like that, as you can see, I have a skyline right there. I have my sky and I can blend it in a little bit more if I want. But now my little guy's not gonna be on flat balmy blue. And speaking of a little guy, this is one of the uh, bundles that you can get from Celebration Free. So with a minimum $50 order, you can get the Jungle Pals stamps. You get all these little guys, which they're adorable. It's a red rubber clean stamp. And then you get these awesome dies to go with it. And you have the vines, you have jungle leaves, you have a tree, um, really, really fun. And this is with a minimum $100 set, I mean order. So if you actually placed a minimum $150 order, not only would you get $15 in Stampin' Up! merchandise free, because that's where our host benefits start, but you would get this entire bundle free. So if you have any questions, contact me and let me know, or if you'd like to place that order, you can just go to creatingwithcolleen.com and order there. All right, moving on. Um, with this piece here, I just kind of laid it down so I would know where my calendar is. And the reason I made this six inches instead of five and a half, because I was afraid my enjoy your day stamp would be a little too tight. So when I go to stamp this, originally, this comes, um, this coordinates with a bundle that we have right now, which is a great bundle. It's called the Heartfelt Hexagon, and then you have the Hexagon Punch to go with it. So this is a bundle in the mini catalog, and I love all the sayings. I love that you have the frames that go with the punch. Um, but then they came out with another celebration set, which you can get with a minimum $50 order, and all these words fit into that, um, that punch. So this is what I'm using for my words. Now, originally I was like just punching pieces out. Let me show you. I have another project I was doing. So I could just have this. It didn't matter really. I didn't have to stamp perfect because I stamped first and then I punched it out and it was even. But when I go to put it on here, I can't see my edges, you know, so because they're right on this folded edge. So I always find if you really want to stamp and get it you know, where you want it, put it on a bigger block so you can see beyond the stamp. So instead of this, I'm gonna put it on here. And the other thing I showed y'all before, if you haven't seen it, 
Sometimes when you put your cling stamps on here, they're really, really strong and they're hard to get off. But I put a little piece, see how easy that peeled? I put a little piece of scotch tape, just regular like that. In fact, let me do one for you because I haven't done them all. I'll do this one. So I have the word hello. I'm just gonna take a little piece of scotch tape and I just kind of put it on one of the corners because this is all strong enough. It's gonna hold it without any problem at all. So I put that little piece of tape. I just trim around, snip it off. And now it's not gonna stick there, but it's great because it gives my finger a place to get under when I'm pulling my stamp up. So if it's on there, I can easily pull it up and it's still gonna stick. So that I think is a big help and that's what I've done with this. It's over on the Y. So when I put this here, see, now I can see around. So when I basically have that there, I can see the blue and where I want to put this. I couldn't see it on the smaller block. So here, I'm gonna ink up, this is in the blueberry bushel. I'm gonna ink up, enjoy your day. Let me move that. When I stamp, I am used to a crowded space. So I'm gonna put this on here, I'm gonna stamp it. And there I have my enjoy your day. And I was able to get it even, because I could see around. Oh, Karen, you are welcome for the Scotch tape tip. It was kind of like an epiphany here in the stamp room when I figured that out, but it really works well. So now that I have this here, I can go ahead. I'm gonna start building the top. I'm building this thing here. So I want my first vine, when I'm looking at this, I wanted my vines to kind of weave in and out of the tree branches at the top, but I knew the first one I had to put on would be this because I had to take my sloth and put him where he's supposed to be. So let me go ahead and just get this out of the way. I'll put my calendar on. And the reason that I wanted this to be backed, the other calendar I just put on plain, but I want this to just have a little bit of a blueberry bushel around it. So the calendar is three by two and a quarter. I just made it an eighth inch bigger. I just made it three and an eighth by two and three eighths. It kind of frames my calendar nicely. I was really, I had a dilemma when I was doing this, which animal I wanted to use, because they are all so stinking cute. And then I thought, you know, this is really cool to be a sloth. I don't think you do a whole lot. You're easy going, you swing from the branches, just eating all day. So he kind of stole my heart and that's what I'm gonna use. And then this here. So just down in the bottom here. And then I'll be able to work around the calendar because I know where everything is at. So I want to take my first vine and I got my sloth and I just kind of eyed it on here. Like where did I want that to go? And then I did want them, I didn't want them like this way. So I did kind of even it out some and I'm not too worried at the top because I have a little bit of room where these will cover the top. But I thought, all right, I think that would be pretty good. He's, you know, not hitting the calendar. He's not too high, because you want to kind of put this up here too, because this will go down. So I can even move that down just a little bit more like that. I think that'll be good. So when I have this here, just to cheat, since I have to take my vine up, I'm going to just kind of put a paper mark here and a mark here. And that's where I know I want to put my vine back. So I will, Bren, when you make your calendars, I want you to bring them to our meeting so we can see them all. Bren is an avid stamper and I'm blessed to have her on our team, our stamping family. And um, boy, she can stamp more than anybody I know. And she said she just ordered her calendars. So Bren, I will be looking forward to seeing what you create with them. Okay, so I have this here. That's my first branch. Then I can take, let me see, I should have three of these. Here we go. I'm gonna take this one first, and I kinda like 
when things go off the edge. So it's just not so symmetrical. And that's huge for me because being a drafter, everything always had to be symmetrical. Um, but here, I'm not going to glue, worry about gluing the bottom of the leaves down because I know this will be strong enough to hold it. Plus, I want to be able to have them kind of weave in and out. So there's my first one. I can kind of move it. Look that it's on the top here. Then I'm going to take this. So that is Old Olive. This is Shaded Spruce. And this is Garden Green. I will go ahead and put this on here. Oh my gosh, it sounds like summertime out there. Cutting grass, all the stuff going on. I'm loving it. Now I'll put this across the top. Again, I like to hold it up, make sure. I'm even on the top, and then I'm gonna take my garden green and I can even put it back under that again. Um, yeah, under that one. Let me see. Because I want all these beautiful branches. So then I'll take this under here. And I do want to make sure though that it goes just about towards the end. And see how I've got that little piece of blue sticking out there? You know me, I don't want that. So I'm just gonna take, you'll never notice it. Take my scissors and just snip that. Off. So I have my branches on the top. I can put my sloth here. And I did have one other vine that I kind of wanted to weave in here. So when I take my vine, I can lift these leaves up and kind of weave it in and out. I think that looks pretty cool. And let me see, can I put it under this one? There. So it just kind of gives us this, um, you know, more like the jungle look. Now I'm not gonna pull this out to put my glue on it again. So I'm just gonna bend the leaves back a little dot there. I got a little heavy on that one. But if I just glue the leaves down, I think it's going to stay in there just fine. One, two. Let me hold it for a second. And then I will do this one. There. And that is how you create your jungle. Again, this was a lot of fun to play with. And you can get it free with a minimum order. Okay, so when I have that, I'm gonna tuck this under here. I lift that up. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim the vine. I wanted to keep the leaf. So this is coming together. So for my sloth, when I color him, I did use the blends, but y'all know I, I um, ordered the new pencils. I like using the pencils and the blender pens too. <clears throat> so I need to practice with that, play with that again. But for now, I'm just gonna use the light crumb cake. And I like coloring, especially my little places with the smaller end. And then I'm gonna come in here with the dark crumb cake and come around. And I can even, if you got a steady hand, which I don't all days, but if you kind of come around, oh my goodness, look at that. You can even get it to where the whites of his eyes show. These pens are really nice. But then I like to come in and get around like all my edges with the fine point. So again, this is the dark um, crumb cake. Come in like that. And they're nice because they don't dry with streaks in them. Turn them around. So I stay on the inside of this edge. And then just to make it a little quicker and easier, I can go to the broad end. And just in case y'all don't know it, it took me years to figure this out on the regular markers. There is a thin line for your thin tip. And then there's a thick line for your broad tip. I used to have to pull each end off to figure out which one was which. Hold on, I wanna get around his chin. 
Um, and you know you never pick the right one the first time. Okay. And then I can just come in here and just finish coloring, bringing all this in. And I don't have to worry about getting too close to my um, edges here. When it dries, it'll all blend. So I've got him there, and I but I did like to take the pecan pie. Pecan pie is an amazing color, um, beautiful. It's in our. It's, it was a new color to us this year, and I kind of like to go where maybe there was a shadow, like underneath his arm, by that arm, and then on his little rumpus here for whatever reason. Just kind of brings in a little bit more shading and shadow, and they go together great. Then I can just come back, and I'm even gonna come back just with the light crumb cake. And when you're using the um, Stampin' Blends, you want to use the Memento ink because it will not run. It was actually made for an alcohol marker, and these are alcohol markers, so do not leave your caps off of them. As you know, alcohol, unlike water, evaporates quickly. So they will dry out if you leave your tips on, I mean, your caps off. So don't do that, don't do that. But here I got my little guy and I'm going to get my dimensionals again. Let me check my comments. Um, aw, Sally, you're so sweet. You know, I love to share creatively. Sally does some beautiful work too. Plus, she stitches and quilts. She has that, oh my goodness, she has that talent that God only gave certain people. So she's very talented there. Um, Karen, I'm not sure what Etsy shop, because I bought them a couple months ago. If you um, just Google, I know you can go to Etsy and Google the calendars and just get the, the right size. I know you'll be able to find them. And if you have trouble, email me and I will go look it up and through my paperwork and see what I can find. So here I have my little sloth. I have everything there. Um, oh, okay, Renee had a good point. She said, she typed in mini calendar, but make sure you get a product that is not a digital download. You will know this isn't a digital download because you have to pay shipping. Um, and they, they do come tend to a pack. Now, years ago, we used to get them from a place called Vippies, and those were great. They had like the red letters, I mean, and the numbers were bigger, but they were quite pricey. Um, and the reason we found this, these people or whatever it was on Etsy was because they ran out. So we had to go looking for them somewhere, and that's how we ended up getting that. But they should be easy to find, and if not, shoot me an email and let me know. So here, again, the way you make your base, it's always going to be four inches. We now know it doesn't matter if you score three quarters on each end or a half inch on each end, it's going to work just as long as you're scored in the middle. And then always just make it slightly smaller than your base piece so it doesn't stick out the sides. Um, here we go. I'm going to put that in half. Um, let's see, I will go ahead and put this on first. I'll put that on with my liquid glue since he is all done. But it was fun to play with the uh, white craft glue, I mean white craft ink again. I will have to do some stamping with it, but they make great clouds in a pinch. So here I'll put this on here. And of course, you know, a little wink of Stella, something has to glimmer on here. So I will take my wink of Stella. I can make him a little shiny. Yeah, definitely that. And then when I come in here, I have all these vines. I'm not gonna worry about coloring all these leaves. If I just have the vine, I think it gives it that little bit of a dimension, a little bit of a shimmer. And I think that'll work. Kind of makes these leaves pop a little bit too. Then from there, so that's like, like you would a normal card. Take your base, fold it in half, fold one side down one way, the other one 
the other way. So you have this look. Actually, it would be like this when you put it in. I will take my liquid glue on the one side. I put it with, oh, I put it with that edge against the end. So that's my edge like this. Okay, push that down. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, I love to teach. You know, I like everybody else to join just for that discount. Um, but what I found early on is that I loved teaching others. My sister is a teacher. She taught um, special ed preschool. So I teach cards, so I do like to think that I'm a teacher too. So then when I close this, I put it on the other edge and I close it. That, the only difference, whether it was a half inch or the three quarters, I think your half inch, which is on the edges, was just a little higher, of course, and then this one is not. So, let's see, let me see. I don't know, it never hurts, I guess. Let me, uh, y'all can let me know if I went too far, but I don't think so. So I'm gonna take this one here. I can always put that there. One fell. Oh, here we go. Right there. It's really sticky. Um, what do y'all think? Maybe there. They say you're supposed to work in threes. So then let me put... Oh, come on. I think I need a new refill there, which I did buy some. Yeah, I like the bling. I like the... Do y'all like the bling? You like the bling on there? I do. Um, he was cutied away, but I think I do like it. So that is how you're going to make a desk calendar. And again, don't forget, you could put pictures on here of people. You could do anything where your calendar is at. But I did want to share with you celebration. Don't forget, this is on page 12 and 13. So for the um, Jungle Pals, with a minimum $50 order, you would get the stamp set. Minimum $100 order, you get these 15 dies, which is a huge set. They coordinate together. And um, with that $150 order, you then, of course, earn your free host benefits. Now, if you would like, they have a uh, special during celebration just through the end of uh, February. And it's a great deal. If you want to join Stampin' Up!, you can pick out $125 in product, only pay $99.00 and the shipping is free, and you have two options here. For the one joining um, special they have, you can get this glass stampin' studio, I mean this mat, it's a beautiful glass mat, and it comes with a silicone mat to use on there that stays on there, uh, holds it really well, and a cleaning cloth, or you can get an extra $30 in product. So if you don't want that option, you can pick $155 in product, only pay $99, and the shipping is free. The best thing is, you are then a part of my Stampin' family, and we really have the most wonderful group of just, it's a wonderful community of stampers who just love to share. We stamp virtually, we stamp in person, so no matter where you are, you can still join us virtually every month. But any questions, let me know, or if you just wanna go ahead and join in, go to uh, creatingwithcolleen.com and, um, you can join my team. I would love to have you. I'm here to help you any way that I can. So anyway, yes, give me a thumbs up, Renee, if you would. Renee told me, give me a thumbs up. Y'all know I was always a people person and out here on social media now. But if you do like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to go to my Creating with Colleen Facebook page where I'm going to put the pictures and the dimensions up. And um, yes, like my video, please. Please subscribe. But most of all, just know I'm here to help you any way that I can. And so just let me know how that is. And I hope you all have a blessed day. The sun is still shining. It's 70 degrees on January 24th. And I'm going to get out and enjoy this day too. So God bless you all. Thanks for joining me. I will come to you next Wednesday on the 31st of January, where we will create some more. Enjoy yourselves today and uh, do something creative. Bye-bye now.